I, 24, female, am getting married in three months to my fiancé Andy, 25, male. We've been together since college and he proposed a couple of months back so I accepted without a second thought. My dad was the first to know because my father is the only parent I'm still in touch with. My mother and I hadn't spoken in almost three years after she got drunk at the first Thanksgiving party I was hosting at my apartment and then insulted me and my food. It sounds petty, but that was pretty much the straw that broke the camel's back for me. My mother had always been kind of an attention seeker and would always try to outdo me. It would feel like she was constantly trying to compete with me or something. And on the day of my Thanksgiving dinner, I finally confronted her about it. She was really drunk and making a scene. So when I told her to cut it out, she started cursing me out and insulted me, my cooking, my appearance, and even started talking smack about Andy. At that point, my dad had to drag her away and leave because she was becoming too much to handle and was ruining the dinner. Shortly afterwards, my parents got divorced. My mother initiated the divorce, shockingly. Apparently, she just didn't want to spend her life with my dad anymore, so she left without much of an explanation as to why she wanted a divorce. It's been three years since the Thanksgiving party and my parents' divorce. My mother and I hadn't spoken since then, and I, for one, was glad about it. My dad was heartbroken when she left because he'd loved her truly, and he had put up with a lot of her awful behavior through the years, only for it to go bust one fine day, all because she suddenly fell out of love with him. It took him a while, but he's been doing better, and I've never really cared about my mother leaving. She was a terrible human being, very narcissistic and self-centered. I only wish I'd kept these things in mind when she reached out to me a couple of days ago, asking me to come visit her because she'd heard from a few relatives that I was getting married and she wanted to make things before I started this new chapter of my life. It was corny, but her message was kind of touching. I was still skeptical though, because she was still the same woman who had put me down my entire childhood and made me feel like I was never good enough. So I talked to Andy about it and he told me that I should give it a chance since she'd made the effort to contact me. And it's been three years, so she might've changed. It wasn't true, but after talking to Andy, I decided to give it a shot and agreed to meet my mother. It turned out to be a pretty bad decision because after I agreed to meet my mother, she insisted that I come over for lunch. I had just planned on meeting her at some restaurant because I didn't think it was appropriate to go visit her house for the first meeting itself. But she talked me into it and I ended up agreeing. Two days ago, I drove down to the address that she'd given me and for some reason it felt really familiar to me. I tried to recall how I knew this place, but was struggling with it. So I just decided to walk up to the door and ring the bell because it was probably just me overthinking all of this since it had been ages and maybe it was just nerves. It was only when the door opened that I realized what a horrible thing my mother had in store for me. So the guy who opened the door was none other than my math teacher from high school who had hated me throughout and tried to make my life hell. I'm not even kidding. I almost did a double take when I saw him and decided to turn around to go back to my car. I thought that my mother was probably just pranking me because it would be just like her to send me to my nightmare from high school's house as a joke after telling me she wanted to reconcile with me. I told him that this was probably just a mistake, apologized, and then started to turn around. But before I could leave, he stopped me in my tracks and told me to come back. I heard my mother calling out to him from inside the house, and to my surprise, he called her honey and asked her to come to the door. By then, I put two and two together, but I was still having a hard time processing all that information because I had just never seen this coming. So while my mother came to the door, I just stood there like a deer caught in headlights. My mother, 
finally appeared in the doorway and smiled at me pleasantly like it was perfectly normal for her to be at my math teacher's house. I asked her how long this had been going on really quietly and she told me that this has been going on for almost four years now. She didn't even seem ashamed of it. She said it really casually to me as well. I freaked out when she said that because I knew what that meant and I'd finally figured out the reason behind my parents' divorce. I screamed at her and asked her how she could do this to me and my dad because I was really upset, but I didn't even know what I was more upset about, her dating my high school bully or her cheating on my dad. I cursed her out for a little time while she tried to calm me down, but then I just left and didn't even look back when she started calling my name to stop me from leaving. I couldn't believe that she would do this to me and my father, who had always been the greatest husband to her. I drove back home in a daze and it was a miracle that I didn't get into any accidents because I was honestly just not in it at all. As soon as I came back home, I broke down so badly that Andy had to drop everything that he was doing to console me. I hadn't told my father that I was going to meet mom, and after what I'd found out, I didn't think it would be such a good idea anyway. So I just didn't mention it to him because I believed that I was protecting him. And for some reason, I also believed that saying it out loud, especially to my father, would make it very real. I did confess to Andy about it and he thought that it would be better if I told my dad before he found out from someone else, but I just wasn't ready to do it. I did not feel mentally prepared to face the consequences, even though it was not really my fault. My mother tried to contact me after I left, but I haven't opened the text even now because I can't think of a single thing that she could say to me to make this better. I'm not exaggerating, but my math teacher really hated me and he truly was my worst bully back then. He never missed a single opportunity to pick on me or to make me feel small and it did affect my self-esteem. And as for my mother, well, I already told you guys about the relationship that I used to have with her. So it was already pretty bad and with the awful surprise that she had for me, I highly doubt I could ever trust her again. When I saw them together, standing in the doorway like that, I honestly felt like the two biggest bullies of my childhood had teamed up to become an ultra nightmare for me or something. I felt awful after what I saw that day and was convinced that going to meet my mother to make amends had been nothing but a huge mistake. So I tried to put it all out of my mind and pretend that it never happened. But then I got a call from my dad this morning. We hadn't spoken properly ever since I met my mother because I'd been afraid that I'd blurt out what I knew and I knew deep down he still had feelings for my mother. So when he called today, I tried to play it really cool, but he already knew about my mom and her boyfriend and he'd actually called to confront me about it. At first, he asked me if I had visited my mother in the past week and I instantly said no, which was a lie. And then my dad asked me if I was sure and I still denied it even though both of us knew the truth. He finally told me to cut it out because my mother had called him the day before and told him everything because she wanted him to convince me to talk to her so that we could fix the relationship before the wedding since she wanted to be there for me. He told me that my mother had told him all about her relationship with my teacher and that she wanted him to talk me into forgiving her and coming back for another visit. I tried to explain my side, but he cut me off and told me that he wasn't disappointed in my mother or anything. He didn't even care about her anymore. But he was pretty disappointed because I hadn't told him the truth as soon as I found out. He told me that he believed that I was the only person he could always count on, but I had really let him down this time. I tried to apologize to him, but he told me that he needed some time to think about this and he believed that it would be for the best if we did not speak for a while. I was hurt by that, so I tried to talk to him, but he hung up on me before I could even get a word in. It's been a couple of hours since then and I've tried every single way to contact him. I've tried calling him, I've tried texting him, and I've even tried to drive by his house. But he wasn't at home. I don't know where he was because he has not responded to anything. 
I even tried to talk to his secretary, but she told me that he was busy for the day and wouldn't be available to talk. I knew that wasn't true and tried to get her to tell me how I could reach him, but she told me that she had strict instructions from my father not to let anyone talk to him that day, and that included me as well. After that, I kind of gave up on trying to reach him because it was clear that he did not want to speak to me. Not right now, at least. I came back home from work a couple of hours ago and I've been pretty depressed ever since. I did talk to Andy about it, but he really thinks that my father is right to be upset with me. I had the chance to come clean to him a few days ago when the incident took place, but I hid it from him just to protect him. Forgetting that he was a full-grown man and could take care of himself just fine, but it was more important for me to be honest with him. Andy is right, but I also feel like my dad should understand where I was coming from because I knew how heartbroken he was when my mother left and I just did not want him to go back into that dark place again. I can understand that he's upset with me, but I think he should also cut me some slack since I was also struggling to come to terms with this information. It's not easy for me to know that my mother was the worst person I'd ever known. I don't understand what to do. AITA for not telling my father that my mother had cheated on him as soon as I found out? Update 1. So I know that most of you guys felt that I did not need to apologize to my father, but I still did it anyway. Because I really love him. He's my only parent who actually cared about me growing up, and I can't afford to lose him. Without his constant love and support, I don't think I would be in the place I am today. It was messed up that he stayed with my mother in spite of her oddly competitive behavior around me, but even then he made sure that I was all right and tried to maintain the peace between my mother and me, and I'll always value that, because he was the one who brought a sense of peace into our chaotic family situation. I don't need to explain what I did and why I did it, but since I'm sharing certain things about my life on Reddit anyway, I felt like I need to tell you guys this and I hope there won't be a lot of judgment coming my way for this. Coming back to my father, I reached out to him yesterday after almost four days of not talking to each other, and he finally answered my call. It was weird at first, but then I just decided to get it over with and figured that I would worry about what he had to say after I apologized, so I just blurted out that I was sorry for not telling him what I had found out about mom and who she was with, on the very day that I found out. I also explained to him my side of things and told him that I was just trying to protect him because I knew what state he had been in when mom left him. I just couldn't bear the thought of being the messenger who brought news like that to him and sent him spiraling once more. I did my very best to explain my thought process behind hiding this from him and told him that I was literally only just trying to protect him and not hiding things from him to protect my mother or whatever he had thought I was trying to do. I apologized for it once more and then waited for him to say something. After a short pause, my father went on to tell me in a really sad voice that it wasn't me who he was upset with and he just thoughtlessly took out his anger on me the other day, which he was really sorry for. He told me that I was right and he was actually taking the news really hard because it was one thing to accept that his wife of more than two decades did not want to be with him out of the blue, but it was another thing to come to know that she'd actually been cheating on him with some other man all along, and that was the real reason that she had left him. He told me that after almost three years of being away from her, he had come to terms with the fact that she didn't want to be with him anymore. But after he learned that she'd been with another man, he just completely lost it. Then he finally told me what he'd said to my mother when she called him to make him talk to me about this. I didn't mention this in my original post because it was getting too long, but I really have to say that my mother has some audacity to go running to her ex-husband, admit that she cheated, and then ask him to do her a favor all in one breath. And to think that she would even believe for a second that my father would force me to talk to her after she started dating the man who had terrorized me in high school? He was a horrible human being, and so is my mother. But that's off topic for now. 
Anyway, my father told me that on the phone call after my mother was done talking, he told her to go to hell because he wasn't doing anything that she just asked him to. She was a cheater and liar and she didn't deserve to be part of my happy day in the first place. So I had done the right thing by running away from her house. If she really thought that my father was going to help her out here, then she should have just gone to a psychologist instead because she was clearly delusional. I have got to say, my father doesn't often lose his temper, but when he does, boy, is it worth a watch. We had a good laugh about what he said to my mother and how flabbergasted she'd seemed when my dad was done insulting her. She started blabbering like a fool after my dad said what he said and tried to accuse him of being cruel to her, but by then my dad had already disconnected the call. He wasn't about to let that woman gaslight him into believing that he'd said anything out of line, and even though he's really upset that my mother had been cheating on him, I'm really proud of him for standing up to her and not letting her push him around like she used to. So for now, things are pretty good between my dad and me. I apologize to him, he apologized to me, and we're great. We agreed that we were going to forget that this ever happened and bury the hatchet. A lot of the comments said that I had nothing to be sorry for and that my dad was being too entitled, and I kind of agreed. But at the end of the day, he is my father, and it's really important for me to have a good relationship with him, especially in the months leading up to what is supposed to be the happiest day of my life. Even Andy agrees that I made the right call by reaching out to him first. So I guess that's that now. Update two. Hi, y'all. I'm back here and this time I'm back to talk about my mother. I honestly and truly wish I hadn't gone to her house the other day. Or better yet, I wish that I hadn't even agreed to visit her and make things right before the wedding because she's psychotic to deal with. I suppose three years of being estranged from her had made me forget exactly how crazy she was. It's all coming back now though. I finally remember why I stopped talking to her in the first place. I'd blocked her a couple of days ago after I'd found out that she told my dad to talk to me and convince me to make amends with her. I did that because I knew that she was the same toxic old snake that I knew, and she was never going to change. And on top of that, she was dating the man who I hated the most as a teenager, and definitely still do. I didn't see any need for me to forgive her and go back to talking to her because she had proven to me time and again that she did not deserve even a bit of my forgiveness. My life was going just fine without her. But somehow she managed to find out where I lived and decided to pay me a little visit along with her nightmare boyfriend. Two days ago, I was at home while Andy was outside in the garden talking to a client on the phone. I was also a little preoccupied with some work, so when the bell rang, I forgot to check who it was and open the door without knowing who was waiting outside. And you guessed it, it was my mother and her boyfriend. Before I could even process anything, the two of them barged into my living room and sat down on the couch as if I'd invited them in. Once I was back to my senses, I demanded an explanation for what they thought they were doing and told him to get the hell out because I didn't want them in my house. My mother told me that they were here to talk things out like civilized and mature adults because we were family and we needed to stick together. I shot back, saying that I didn't consider her family, especially not after what she'd done to me and my dad, so she could just leave like I was asking her to or I would call the police. She pretended to play innocent and asked me what exactly had she done to me and my dad to make us hate her so much. It was pretty exasperating, but I was not going to let her get away with this. So I told her to her face that firstly she cheated on my father, who had given her a wonderful life, and who had she cheated on him with? She screwed him over for some mediocre high school teacher who thought it was funny to bully kids just because they were not very good at math, which was pretty much one of the pettiest reasons I could think of to pick on someone and bully them to such an extent that they started suffering from low self-esteem and would dread having to sit through his classes. 
At least her boyfriend had the decency to stop glaring at me then and start looking at the floor out of shame when I said that. My mother, however, took a different approach and started trying to downplay what she'd done. She told me that it wasn't really a big deal because she could have had a great life for herself even without the help of my father and that he was not the great man that I always made him out to be by putting him on a pedestal. Now that was laughable because my dad was a surgeon and my mother had never even been to college so that was her bluffing plain and simple and I called her out on it too. She then tried to make it seem like her boyfriend wasn't even that bad of a guy, even though literally anyone who went to my school would agree and could tell you how horrible he was to most kids who were not good at math. He was a nasty bully and really should never have become a teacher. But my mother was too in love with him to realize that. So she went on to defend him and told me that instead of getting offended back, then if I'd actually bothered to listen to his criticism and put in the work, then I might have been a better student. So it wasn't his fault. That's when I really lost it. I began to scream at her hysterically and I'm kind of embarrassed by that now that I think of it. But at least I got Andy's attention, who came rushing back to the house since he'd been busy with the phone call and was so engrossed in the conversation that he barely even took note of who had come to see us then. Andy grabbed me and calmed me down because I'd really gone very close to them to try and intimidate them. He dragged me back and yelled at my mother and her boyfriend to leave immediately or he'd call the cops. They judged the situation and I must have seemed crazy because they left in a hurry. I kept ranting for almost an hour after they left and it must have taken me a while to calm down because when I finally did, I fell asleep almost immediately as I tired myself out. When I woke up, my dad had come over and he and Andy took care of me to make sure I was doing okay emotionally and that was really sweet. Two days since, I haven't yet heard from my mother so I'm hoping it stays that way. Update 3. Hi. So it's been four weeks since the last update and my mother has still not tried to contact me yet. So I'm really hoping that my meltdown from last time has convinced her to stay the hell away from me now. From what I know, she's been talking to everyone and trying to convince them that I am a horrible human being for cutting her off just because she loves the guy that she's with but let's be real, nobody's buying that. By now, almost all of their common friends and her relatives know that she cheated on my dad and they're not a fan of that. So she can continue to play the victim, but my dad and I are happier than ever. And that's how it's going to be now. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.